Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing More Dark for the Nintendo Switch. Now, More Dark was released for the Nintendo eShop on November 27th of 2020. It has a normal list price of only $4.99. However, as of filming of this video, November 28th of 2020, it has a sale going on right now at a list price of only $3.99. Now, just before we get into the details, don't forget that if you like these videos and you want to see more, drop a like on the video. It really does help out a lot. Also, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Now, More Dark is a retro-style 8-bit puzzle platformer. If you're unfamiliar with what a puzzle platformer is, it's basically a 2D platformer, but rather than the focus being on action or adventure, the focus is on solving puzzles. In this case, you're locked in a simple room and your point is to be able to reach the exit. Now, just before we get into gameplay mechanics, I just want to be very clear with you. This is a very simple game and there is not much storyline. Basically, you have a one line dialogue at the beginning of the game, which gives you a setup. And then you have a ending one line dialogue at the end of the game, which gives you a sort of conclusion. But the way the gameplay is set up is that you are playing a minion of hell and you've been tasked with basically catching all the prisoners that run rampant because the devil is on vacation and his daughter was put in charge, but she hasn't been doing her job right. So your goal is to catch all the prisoners, make it to the exit to get to the next level and find more prisoners. Now the basic mechanics of the game are very simple. You start out with only a jump and ability to push blocks and as you go through the game you gain more abilities about every 15 stages but you only gain one ability at a time and with a total of 60 stages that means by the end of the game you have an additional three abilities that you've accumulated now the setup to the stages are done in a very simple way either just make it to the exit because the exit is already unlocked or when you get further down the road you have some inmates to kill first and send back to hell basically and once they're all dead the exit will unlock but before you actually get to the minions you have to make sure to secure yourself a path to make it to the exit if you're asking yourself what you have to do if you make a mistake and you don't have a path secured and you say stuck well the x button will automatically sacrifice yourself resetting the stage, giving you another chance to basically try a different attempt. Now, also in traditional puzzle platformer style, the stages at the beginning are very, very simple. Because like I said, at the beginning, you only have one or two abilities maximum. And as the game goes on and you add abilities, well, the complexity of being able to get to the exit becomes more and more of a difficult task. But I would say that pretty much sums up the totality of more Dark's gameplay. The gameplay wasn't set up to be very complex, but now let's take a, let's start by taking a look at a few of the good things that More Dark does before getting to a conclusion whether it's worth your time and money. Now, first, one of the things I find More Dark does very well is its progression scale. As I said, it starts out very simple, and every time it introduces a new ability, it does a really good job of giving you one or two easy stages at the beginning, just so you can get a general idea of what the ability does. And then it throws you a loophole by giving you much more difficult applications of that same ability. But by giving you those two or three introductory stages, it really prepares you to be ready to think outside of the box when you actually need to solve the puzzle, which gets a little bit more difficult, as I said, two or three stages down the road. Also, another thing is the application of those abilities I find in More Dark is done very well because they found really interesting ways of making you think outside the box while applying the exact same abilities from one stage to another. So if you really want to be able to appreciate the game, you have to take a few seconds at the beginning of the stage to take a look at your surroundings, Think of what abilities you have and how you can approach it if you want to be able to actually secure the kills on the inmates and make it to the end exit of the stage. So ultimately, as a base premise of a puzzle platformer, it does a really good job of focusing on the puzzle elements and not so much the platform elements. Also, I find that the overall gameplay feeling that the game translates really well into its visual style. Now, it went for a really basic 8-bit style. 
Like there's 8-bit and this is basic 8-bit. Like there isn't much to each character design, but at the same time it works because the game is using very simple, easy mechanics, but applied in a variety of ways. And the overall visual presentation is extremely simple, sort of fitting with the overall feeling that the game is trying to translate to you. The point isn't the visuals or the basic overall presentation of the game, it's the mechanics and finding interesting way of you doing a lot with very little. So although the visual presentation isn't anything to write home about, I find that in the overall feeling of what this game is going for, it really fits and I count it as a positive point because it draws you into the overall feeling of this game. You really feel like you're playing one of those old school 8-bit puzzle platformers. Another thing that the game does really well is every 15 stages, it throws you a boss stage. But the boss stage, although it shifts totally in gameplay style of all the rest of the game, either being an Arkanoid type gameplay, uh, a shooter, or even just a basic boss that you have to hit 10 times over the head to kill him, it changes up the gameplay in a refreshing way, but it stays true to its puzzle platforming roots. Like it doesn't feel like it doesn't have a place in this game, although at the same time feeling fresh and new. Even I would say that I would have liked to see more of these stages. Rather than every 15 stages, I would have liked to see it like every seven or eight stages with like mini mid boss stages and whatnot. Because I like these stages so much that they were pretty much the high point of my gameplay throughout the game. So now that we know what it's doing right, Let's talk about a couple of the weaknesses, however, of the same game. Now, the first weakness I would say would be the music. Unfortunately, there isn't a huge variety of tracks, and I find that what's there is lacking a little bit. When in the presentation of the game, in the description of the game itself, it says that it has really classic 8-bit styled music. But I found the music to be really basic 8-bit. It doesn't give you an overall feeling of integrity with the rest of the game and with a game that is so simple in presentation you really are looking for that like auditory enhancement to really keep you into the gameplay and keep you motivated and the music in the game is a little bit too muted you can raise it in the options but even when you raise it the music is it's too much like background music and not really like something that is sort of motivating you to push on and on. And at the same time, there isn't a variety of tracks. Like I would have liked to see the music change every like five to 10 stages, or at least like a track loop. Like basically every, you have three tracks that basically loop over and over again, changing each stage. Secondly, the controls are sort of slippy. But it's normal because pl puzzle platformers aren't necessarily designed around really tight controls. They're designed against solving the puzzles of the levels. And I would say that for 95% of the stages, this game fits perfectly with that overall feeling. You don't mind that the controls are slippy because they don't need to be pinpoint precise because the stages are designed in a way where you don't need that level of precision. But there are like three or four stages out of the 60 that are included in this game where they sort of decided to go with a overall layout that requires you to make pinpoint jumps or actions throughout the stage and the controls just feel too slippy to accomplish that like if you're looking on the gameplay overall the whole 60 stages basically you have a death counter at the top left and the point is to finish the 60 stages with the lowest possible death counter. I think I finished somewhere in the 140 to 150 death range. Sounds like a lot, but when you look at 60 stages, that's an average of only one or two tries per stage. Well, basically, over half of those deaths happened in the same two or three stages. And those weren't the last stages. They were somewhere towards the middle of the gameplay because they would set up the stage in a way where you have to accomplish these pinpoint precision jumps when the controls are a little too slippy to basically accomplish those. And I would say this is a trap that a lot of puzzle platformers fall into 
but if you decide to have sort of slippy controls, you should not design any stages around having pinpoint accuracy with those same controls. Now we get to the last point I want to talk about, and it's sort of an in-between point in the sense that it's negative but understandable at the same time. There are overall 60 stages in the game. Now this will obviously depend on your level of comfort with puzzle solving, but I managed to finish this game in probably under two to three hours of gameplay. Like somewhere between two and three hours of gameplay, I was done all 60 stages on this, and you know, I played pretty much straight through the game in two sittings. Now that can sound like quick, However, the reason I said that it's not necessarily only a negative point, number one, the pricing of the game sort of makes sense. With a $5 game, you know, two to three hours of good gameplay, and like I said, I don't want to pretend like I'm an excellent player, but I am used to puzzle solving, so I do think that maybe there are some gamers that it'll take more like four or five hours because you will stay stuck on a few stages, having to make more attempts on average than I did. But if you're a regular gamer, uh, you could get through this game very, very quickly. However, like I said, it sort of fits with the price. There's also quite a, an amount of replayability to the game. Because once you've actually played through all 60 stages and unlocked all abilities, there are 12 hidden keys in the stages that you can actually replay the stages with your newly found abilities. And you'll be able to find secret hidden keys that you couldn't access before, which unlock basically visual upgrades to your character. Now, I myself only played through and found one of those keys because the overall appreciation of the game didn't really depend on finding those keys, but I guess someone could play through all the stages again, really grinding through them to make sure that they find all 12 keys, and you probably are gonna double or triple your gameplay time out of this game. And there's also a second aspect. You could actually replay the whole game starting from scratch and trying to finish it with less deaths. Undoubtedly, if you're really into puzzle platformers and you want to give yourself a challenge, that could be an ultimate challenge because, because of some of the way the boss stages are set up, you'll see that trying to finish like, I would say under 20 to 25 deaths is actually quite a challenge in this game, even if you already know all the stages by heart and how to solve them. So now with all that out of the way, I think we're ready for a verdict. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how I do my reviews, I don't give a numerical score. I give an overall statement that explains my position on the game. If you want to see what all the statements are so you can see where it's rated, look at the description of the, the video down below. They're all enumerated so you can get a better idea of what the score means. Now, in this case, I'm giving More Dark a solid game. Basically, if you're looking for a puzzle platformer for the price that's being offered, this is a really decent offering. And you're going to have, I would say, a representative amount of gameplay out of the price you're paying. However, then again, if you're not into puzzle platformers, forget about this game. It's not for you because you have to be into this genre to appreciate this game. However, I would say also that because of its simplicity overall, if you've never tried out this type of gameplay and you wanted to try out a puzzle platformer, well then you could actually try More Dark as a first puzzle platformer because I would say it's a good introduction because it doesn't go too deep where you're gonna get lost at one point and feel helpless. So overall, that was my review of More Dark. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, if you like these videos, it really does help a lot. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and also don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my videos come out. But as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.